Hi everyone, I'm Sarah, welcome back to my channel. In December 2023, I was diagnosed with ADHD, the inattentive kind, which sort of explained why I do the things the way that I do the things, which is not the way things should be done. I could go back and watch all of my old YouTube videos and I could point out all of the signs I've been missing for all of this time. But I can also pick out the areas of opportunity that I have to try and improve with the knowledge that I have now. And with that, here are nine things that I can't do as an ADHD writer. Number one, keep on task. I, with my fun, amazing ADHD brain, I find it extremely difficult to keep focused on the task that I have set in front of me for an extended amount of time. I get bored easily, I get distracted even easier, and once I have gotten bored or distracted, it's very difficult for me to then get back onto task. I've noticed recently my writing days are not broken up into large chunks of writing that I do. They are broken up into 20 minutes in the morning, 25 minutes, an hour or so later. Nothing for ages because I've gotten distracted. And then maybe an hour, if I'm lucky, sort of in the afternoon, evening-ish time, again, nothing. And then maybe 20 to 25 minutes before I go to bed. So I feel like I've done something for the day just to, just to, just to try and keep me happy. I, I can't do it. Caveat, I can do it, but I have to be in the midst of a personal challenge that if I don't win, I will be mean to myself for all eternity. Although to be fair, learning what I know now, I can't believe I managed to do any of those fast drafting writing challenges. I did burn out excessively afterwards and didn't write for like two months once they were done though. So you win some, you lose some. Number two, write for multiple days in a row. I try, I really do. In 2023, I had a personal goal for myself, um, instead of a word count goal to focus on for writing, to write for a minimum of an hour for five days a week. And I started off really well because it was a challenge, it was new, it was fun, it was exciting, and that quickly petered off. To this day, I still find it, again, unless I'm in the midst of a challenge, I can't write for multiple days in a row, especially on the same project. I'll get two or three really good writing days in and then the excitement for it will just stop and I'll physically want to write. I'll sit in front of my computer wanting to do the work, but my brain won't let me do that work because it's done enough work over the past few days. You need a break. I, I don't need a break. I need to do the work, but my brain does not listen to me. There are all of these challenges that I've seen on how to be writer's block, which this is not, but similar veins, wanting to write but physically can't, to help motivation, to help stop procrastination. And a lot of them are write for multiple days in a row, make it a habit. So you come to expect having to write. I, my brain won't let me do that. And we can piggyback right off that to number three, setting and sticking to a routine. I would love to be the type of writer, the type of person who can get up nice and early in the morning and follow a strict well, strict routine for the day, especially on my days off. In the morning, once I've gotten the kids off to school, I'll do some writing, then I can do some reading, I can do some chores. I would love to know what I'm going to do next. I crave knowing what I'm going to do next because then it takes the pressure off my brain having to think of something to do. But my brain also doesn't like knowing what it's going to do because sometimes I'll need to read according to my schedule, say, uh, but my brain doesn't want to read. So it refuses the idea completely, paralyzes me in a state of and it, I, I won't do it, I'll do something else instead. Usually something very much less productive and more 
scrolly scrolly on the internet type thing. I'm not impulsive in any sense of the words physically. Um, I think of stupid stuff all the time to do writing wise, hence all of the stupid insane challenges I've done. Once my brain clings to a fun idea, it will not let it go until I've done it. But if I ask it to do something as simple as please follow these steps throughout the day, let's focus on this task and then focus on that task, it won't do it. I have a really difficult time, I feel, transitioning between different tasks. I have a difficult time transitioning between being productive and being unproductive. So if I do get super focused on something and I know I need to stop doing it, I find it super difficult to stop doing it. But in the same vein, if I'm not doing something productive, I find it really difficult to transition into doing something even, even slightly more productive than absolutely nothing. And I think that's the problem with routines because it's moving from one thing to another. My brain doesn't want the hassle of trying to force itself from writing mode into reading mode, into chore mode, into being active, into rest. So it would just rather just not do anything at all. Number four, do the big thing first, AKA eat the frog. I don't know where that term came from. It's a really weird term, but I sort of understand what they're saying. One of the big things that you'll see when you are researching how to defeat writer's block or how to be productive in the first place and maintain your motivation is to eat the frog, AKA out of all of the things you have on your to-do list, you do the big thing first. That way you've overcome the hardest challenge, you feel hyped up, you feel great, and you will go on to do everything else that you want to do. No. If I have a list of things to do and one of them is a super, super big thing, like, let's call it writing. Writing's not a big thing, but in my brain sometimes it is a super, super big thing. Especially if I have, a, not a deadline, but if I have a certain outcome that I want, AKA, finishing the third draft of Beneath the Hawthorne Lives. That is my big thing on my to-do list that I need to do. If I have a free day and I have a ton of stuff to do, the big thing, I can't do it first. I, I get freaked out at the thought of doing the big thing first. I don't have the motivation to do the big thing first. I can sit there and go, right, you just need to get up and you need to do the thing. Do this big thing, it will take you, it won't take writing five minutes, but anything big, it won't take you very long. It will take you this amount of time roughly. Do it and then you can get on with everything else. I No, because it's such a big thing, my brain just will not let me start it because it's so big, it's too difficult to start. I can't do the big thing first. The big thing scares me. I need to do the small things first. My dopamine is at zero in regards to doing the big task. And I need all of the dopamine in order to do the big task easily with enough motivation and passion and focus to get the big thing finished lest I don't finish it and then I get mad at myself for not finishing the thing. So I have to do the little tasks and step by step, complete a task, get a little bit more dopamine, which will push me onto the next little task, give me even more dopamine and so on and so forth until I'm so motivated by all of the stuff that I have accomplished. We can do this big thing. It's just one more thing. It's fine. Everything's great. The trouble is starting the small things in order to get to do the big thing. But that's another problem entirely. I've forgotten what number we're at. Five? One, two, three, four, five. Force myself to write. This is another sort of piece of writing advice that you find floating around the internet. And to be fair, this is a piece of writing advice that I used to follow myself to the best of my ability and that I also used to give other writers because that was writing advice that had been given to me. You really don't want to do any work. You're feeling so unmotivated. You don't want to do anything, but you need to sit down and whether you've got the creativity or not, you need to open up your document and you need to start writing. Force yourself to write. I used to be able to do that. 
but over the years and with four kids my ADH symptoms have gotten a lot worse and a lot more pronounced than they used to be they're a lot more noticeable to me and the things that I used to be able to do two three four years ago I can't do now because my brain is just too overwhelmed all of the time to be able to do those things. Forcing myself to write is one of them because I don't want to make writing a chore. Chores are horrible. I hate chores. My brain hates them. I don't clean my house. I rage clean my house. I have to be so annoyed and such in a bad mood with the state of my house that I don't clean to be able to clean. Okay, that's how my brain works. It's super annoying, but that's how it works. What did I get from forcing myself to write to cleaning? Anyway, no matter how hard I try, if I'm really not in the mood to write, nothing will get me writing. To the point where I can put on a live stream of someone doing writing sprints, which is usually really helpful because that's body doubling and that usually kickstarts me into doing some work. I physically can't. I will sit there and my brain will seethe at the thought of doing any work. I can be reading what I've written to try and find a spark. My brain will be like, no, I refuse to. I'm not, I don't want to write. And if I absolutely force myself to do any work, my excitement, my passion, my love for that project is instantly gone because I'm being forced to work on it when I don't want to work on it. And then I won't be working on it for like one, two, three, twelve 12 months because of that one incident of me trying to force myself to do the work. Forcing yourself to write might work for some people, but for others, it just makes things a whole lot worse. Number six, I wasn't bothered to hold two hands up. Stay excited for more than a few weeks on any one project. I hate this one. This is why I have six projects that I'm currently working on because I can't stay focused. This is something which has only just occurred to me over this past month after sort of learning and researching more about my diagnosis. I flip around to so many different projects because I have so many new ideas I feel excitement for that I want to start writing immediately. So I will stop work on one project and start work on a new project because that's where that's where my happiness is. That's where the dopamine wants to take me. For a lot of people, the first draft is a really difficult step. I love first drafts, mostly. I find them really, really easy to write because it's just me getting my ideas down on the page. And while sometimes I do get sucked into the perfectionism of it all, usually after a couple of weeks, I can push past that and just get down to the nitty gritty doing all the horrible detail for it. Because I don't ever usually take more than a few weeks to write my first draft, I can maintain that excitement for it until it is done with absolutely no problem. The issue I have is with revision. And this is where being unable to stay excited for a project really, really fails me. Again, this is something that I have really only just realised, especially now that I am trying to finish off the third draft for Beneath the Hawthorne Lies, which I started doing. Breakfast. Oh, I can't eat that now, damn it. What was I talking about? shouldn't have ordered breakfast while I was filming the video. That was a really stupid thing to do, Sarah. I was talking about Beneath the Hawthorne Lies. Okay, ever since I started doing the third draft of Beneath the Hawthorne Lies, which I started back in January of 2023, I'm still not done. With first drafts, everything is new and shiny and exciting because I haven't explored the world, the characters, the plot or anything like that. I have free reign to do whatever I want and my brain absolutely loves it. When it comes to revision, I've already written a book. I know what's gonna happen. And fair enough, sometimes I'll have to make structural changes or plot changes. I'll have to add new scenes in. Um, because it's already a fully formed idea that I don't have to work too much to change, my brain enjoys it a bit less. And thus I can get excited for the initial start of revision because I get to organize stuff, I get to do the notes. I get to 
do the new thing of thinking about how I'm going to change it. But when it comes to writing it, I very quickly get bored with, I've written this scene already. I've done this already. I know what's going to happen next. I don't, this doesn't sound right. I don't, I don't like that. And, and my brain is full of questions and it's just repeated information over and over again, especially the later the drafts I get into. Um, so draft one, fine, great, fantastic. Draft two can usually get done a little bit faster um, because draft two is where I usually make most of the changes I need to make. Draft three, no, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I don't do it. It, it bores me. Revision bores me. It bores my brain because there's nothing new about something that I have read five times and written twice already and I'm having to write again. So it makes it really difficult for me to write a novel and finish the draft to a super decent point in order for me to then move on to the next step, which is a massive issue because I've been writing for ages. I've been wanting to be a published author for as long as I can remember. And I want to get to the stage where I'm actively querying something that I'm super, super proud of. And, you know, maybe I jumped the gun a little bit with And So We Cover and Abingdon House in regards to moving them onto the query stage. I was happy enough with them in order to do that. Um, but I don't spend enough time or focus enough time on any one novel in order to get it to that perfect, perfect place to then move on. My, there's not enough dopamine in order for me to work for an extended amount of time on that project. I do have to stop and start. I will work on it for maybe a month and that's on and off during the month before I'm done. I have to have to leave it alone and I have to work on something else. I have to try and get the dopamine for a different project in order for me to continue writing, otherwise I'll just stop writing completely and I don't want to do that either. Um, I always have to keep jumping from project to project to keep my interest, which is why I have so many. I have a seventh, an eighth and a ninth novel as well. They're shelved right now. Um, I don't need to find the dopamine for any of those because that's just gonna push every other novel I'm working back further on the back burner, which I don't want especially with what it is that i need to do and hopefully i will find a way to overcome that incessant lack of dopamine for finishing an already written project continuously until i need it where it needs to be because otherwise i'm going to be a writer forever and not have any finished work <laughs> that's not what i want number eight One, two, three, four, five, six, number seven, number seven. Outline. I really want to be an outliner. I crave, I crave so much to be an outliner. Seriously, I, the problem I have with all of my novels is that they are not plotted well. <laughs> The character arcs aren't plotted well because I don't plan my characters beforehand. I like to explore my characters through the drafts. I can't do that unless I finish all of the drafts, but I like to explore my characters. The plot doesn't make sense and there's all these plot holes because I don't, you know, properly plan out what's going to happen. My villains are one dimensional because I haven't properly, you know, done those. And I can sit there with all of the outlining structures in the entire world and all of the words with all of the explanations on how they work and what needs to go in them. And I can do a very, very basic outline, as in this is what happens in all of the main beats. And this is a couple of scenes of what could happen, you know, during fun and games or bad guys close in, for example, where it just gives you absolutely nothing except fill this with something fun. And I can try and delve even deeper. Um, I have sat there trying to outline every single scene and physically match up all of the plot points with the character arcs. My brain just clocks out. I get bored doing it because the excitement I've got wants to go to writing it as opposed to just planning it out. 
because my brain knows that if I plan it out too much, I'm going to get to the writing stage already knowing what's going to happen, already knowing how every scene is going to go. And that's just going to suck the joy out of writing. It's going to be like I'm doing a second draft rather than a first draft because all of the information is already plotted out really, really well. But I need to do that in order to create less work for me in the later drafts, where draft two is having major plot changes because a lot of stuff doesn't make sense, it doesn't flow, it doesn't transition well. It, I can't have one without the other. Is that the right way around that I wanna go? I can't outline because it will bore me, um, but outlining will cause less work, which will make the revision easier. I can't, I can't have both, unfortunately. I'm still trying though. I'm putting a lot of work at the moment into properly outlining and plotting out plot characters, subplots for my Dark Academia novel, Bird Little House, which I have been brainstorming since January of last year. I recently just worked on the characters. Some of them are alright, some of them are less than alright, but they have their stuff. I'm working solidly on making sure that the plot makes sense, that I have enough stuff going on. That's going to be proper outlined and, and see how it's taken me a year, because I can't focus on doing the outlining because my brain thinks it's a lot of work. I can't do it for more than a couple of weeks at a time before I have to move on to something else because my brain just doesn't want to think about it anymore. We will, we will see, it's going to be my experiment, how writing a first draft is and how to keep the writing the first draft interesting and exciting when you have it all figured out. We're going to give it a go and hopefully it will make me a bit more open to outlining better in the future. Now we're on number eight. Now we're on number eight. Keeping my notes in one place. Um, all my notes for Bird Whistle House are in four, five different places. Um, I have one Google Doc, which is um, a free draft Google Doc of everything I want in it. There is an outline Google Doc, which has got random scenes uh, dumped into it. There is my Scrivener file, which has character stuff in it, as well as plot stuff in it. Um, I'm trying out Butter Docs at the moment. There's more plot stuff, outline stuff, and character stuff in Butter Docs. There's hundreds of pieces of paper underneath my desk, notepads, everything, um, filled with random notes, like my notes for this video, for example. And I have Bird Whistle House stuff written on those as well. Actually, there's another place because I also bought this on a whim and I have bird whistle plot house stuff in here also. And probably if I looked on my phone, I can't because I am currently recording on it. Uh, there's probably a note in the notes app of something bird whistle house related. Also, I can't keep my notes in one place. I tried. I had the Google Doc and yet somehow I've still got six places to, to keep all of those notes. I like to say that I'm a very organised person. I think I like to think of being organised and I want to be organised so I try to be organised and then at some point along the way my brain stops caring about being organised or it doesn't care about tidying up or it doesn't care about finding that one place that I have stuff. And it just goes to the nearest thing that I have and does the note taking on that. I, I'd love to keep all my notes in one place. But if I'm doing something and I think of something in my head, my first thought is to just pull out a notepad. And because I have so many, I don't have just one notepad down here under my desk, which to be fair, if I did just have one notepad under my desk, this wouldn't be an issue. I have like four or five, and sometimes they get scattered about my desk. So I will just reach for the closest notepad I can find and write the note that I want to on it. And then I'll continue writing on that piece of paper for all of the things that I'm thinking of that day. 
in order to keep it in the one place um and then that will get ripped out and it will it will end up somewhere on my desk usually in the pile of note paper that i have also under my desk um and then even if it was something super important i'll completely forget that i have that note and i'll be looking through them one day and i'll be like oh yeah i had that great i don't think that's going to change but i suppose i can try something I need to be bothered to try something though and finally thing number nine that i can't do as an adhd writer ignore my perfectionism again this is something that i used to be able to do especially when it came to first drafts i can't do it no more i don't know what my need is for things to be perfect as in with what i'm writing i think as i'm writing something in order for me to continue feeling excited about it i have to like what it is that i'm writing because if i don't like what i'm writing or if i question myself too much i start not enjoying the process and then my dopamine will very quickly fall down because i'm not enjoying writing as i should be enjoying it that doesn't sound right that's not the right word that transition doesn't make sense and i'm like oh my god i suck this is terrible this is awful why am i doing this and i'm just i'm done i'm done i'm done and it is super super frustrating because it wastes any focus that i have for that current project it wastes all of the excitement that i have doing that project it wastes all of the dopamine that i currently have for that project and then i stop working on it which i really don't need to do i did this with beneath the hawthorne lies i'm sorry i'm talking about that novel so much it's just first-hand experience with everything that i'm doing right now because i'm currently actively working on it um i was supposed to finish it by the end of january Let's, we didn't do that now did we though because I got bored <laughs> and I lost the dopamine for it um what's I talking about oh, damn it because it's a third draft in my head it needs to sound good because it's a third draft it should sound better than the first and second draft there's a lot of new scenes in this third draft and I can't write them as first draft scenes because this is not a first draft novel uh, it has to sound like it's the third draft, even though it's the first draft of that particular scene. And it's the first draft of the transition from that scene into this new scene into another scene that I've already written. And because I can't write a third draft quality for a first draft, because obviously it's my thoughts going onto the page, my brain doesn't like it. My brain doesn't think it sounds as good as everything else. My brain wants to stop working on it because it can't think of a way to make it sound as good as anything else and it gets frustrated that i'm not writing the scene that i need to write to finish the third draft because it doesn't sound how i think it should sound because it's in a third draft novel and not a first draft novel and i just i can't turn it off easily if i get into a flow i can turn it off if I'm feeling happy with what I'm writing, even though it's not the best, I can I can turn it off. But it's really difficult for me to outrightly ignore any perfectionism I have because, because annoyingly it links directly to my excitement of writing the novel. How I'm going to work and improve on all of these things, I have absolutely no idea for most of them. It's going to be a lot of trial and error it's going to have to be a lot of acceptance that this is just the way my brain works. And in those moments of downtime where the dopamine has gone for something I need to work on, I need to not wallow in it because I'm wallowing it a lot because I'm annoyed and do something else to maintain a sort of decent level of dopamine in order to try and get back into the novel faster. It's going to be a long process. It's going to be a slow process. I'm going to complain about it constantly. Mm -hmm my voice is going what is going on but i've been living with adhd for a very very long time and now that i know that i have it i want to try and work with it as much as i can instead of working against it which is what i have been doing
So those are nine things that I can't do as an ADHD writer. I'd say number 10 is keeping my desk clean, but I organized it specifically to film this video. So it's all right at the moment. It won't be in a couple of days. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if anything on this list hits home for you as a writer. How do you combat it if it does? And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.